What's up guys, Erroneous here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and on this video, we actually have a collab with YST, and YST, thanks for coming on the channel, man, how you doing? How's it going? This is long overdue, so I'm excited to be here and speak about Live Arena for once. Let's go. Hey, glad to have you on the channel, man. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Live Arena, so the champions that we utilize, or most likely utilize, and the builds on those champions and why we use those champs in general. And we might throw in a couple of champions that are underrated on our accounts or just champion shoutouts that we love to utilize that maybe most people don't see often in Live Arena videos because you're just so used to seeing the Marichkas, the Tarasas, all the top meta champions, and not everybody yeah. has them. So it's always cool to see a different mix. So we're going to get started in Live Arena. Uh, and, and so, YSD, do you love to dabble in live arena a lot is it something that you kind of do here and there do you know what it is it's my it's my guilty pleasure so like do you know when i got because the ways that the four hour windows between them happens like just before i go to bed i managed to get a few battles in so that's kind of like the thing i like to do as my mm -hmm. nightcap i guess but i do enjoy it uh, from time to time for sure yeah it's definitely one of those things where y you want to kind of see it buffed in certain aspects and then on the other mm -hmm. hand you want to see not too much of a buff to it but at the same time you just want to see more for the community in my opinion for what they yeah. can do for live arena because right now it's just a matter of whoever's at the top end has the top play champions has the top gear and that's that and you yeah. see a lot of the same champions over and over and i think that if they just made something different in live arena in, in a sense where let's do one week where they're like only utilize certain champions from the epic yes from that's exactly what i'm talking about oh, i was you know? literally yeah that would be like one week is oh guys you can still have the same mode there but have like sub modes right yeah. so it's like oh use skinwalkers this week only or mm -hmm. you know these factions or someone from this alliance i think mm -hmm. it'd be really cool or just even having like a like a matchmaking friends list so i can fight yeah. you in a live arena battle right for content i would so, love to just... see content creators create some type yeah. of almost like land lobby where you're you're just all together and you're literally just fighting each other and you do a tournament and you do yeah uh you know your best champs or worst champs or we can take champs you know how you guys have done like a deadwood jedi collabs where you have certain champs you can utilize for hydra except you mm -hmm. do that for live arena you can't use all the top meta champs you have to use champions that are underrated or underutilized and try mm -hmm. to beat each other that way i think that would be super cool it'd be so healthy for like um discord communities facebook communities they can jump in their live streams in their discords i think it just has endless possibilities uh being able to host those tournaments it'd be yeah. really cool i think it'd be really awesome so yeah so let's get into some champions of my own and then we'll go into some champions of your own i guess we'll do one to one so champions mm -hmm. that i utilize mainly my top five to ten will probably do five, at least five champions and so the first one that i utilize a lot ever since i got her was of course lady mikage and Ooh, she's okay. actually an insane champion do you have her yet um no i don't ah, well, <laughs> do you what it is I, I need that ill frig dude oh <laughs> the one that looks bland like he works at a coffee shop yeah i need i need the coffee shop worker and i need a <laughs> I actually had to sacrifice my fire gun Isbel for the fusion, so I don't have one of her as well. Um, but yeah, it's you sad times, man. Go. Oh, and you know what else yeah. is crazy? I don't know if you saw one of my previous videos, but get this. I actually should have just stayed there. I ended up pulling a second uh, Mikage. No way. What you, you, yeah. Oh, your first mythical was my a first bloody mythical Mikage. was a Mikage. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Like, weirdly, that's not even a bad thing. I don't, is it a bad thing to have? I think it's a great thing to have, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, should I plus one or guys? Should I not? No, you and, can't uh, do that, man. And they still don't have the faction guardians for it. And I was like, I don't really know. But in general, I just don't think you, you don't get really enough stat boost to sanction a plus one, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think. I think it's just HP. That's it. Yeah. 10%. It's not worth it. Not man. enough. And so for me, well, maybe it's a little bit more because it's not faction guardians. It's like, a, I think it's resistance, accuracy, actually multiple, okay. but it's still not enough, I don't think. Um, so her abilities are so crazy. And my favorite ability for her and why I use her is actually this one right here. This stun ability yeah. on a three turn cooldown, no books required. If we put a book in her, it's resistance. Ignores resistance by 20%. So 
but I swear mm-hmm. I stun people so often. And then I ended up putting her in a refresh accessory. So I'll just literally Ooh. he's just boom, 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 stun, stun. And it goes off way more often than I expect it to. Mm-hmm. And then I just go high speeds, high accuracy. And by no means is this a crazy champion here for a build. I am free to play, so it's not crazy. But if you put her for 400 speed, which I've seen people do, she's insane. She's absolutely absurd. And she can't get locked out. Yeah, so you're, you're making me against... jealous, man. You're making me jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's so insane. So anybody who gets her, like, yeah, she's definitely meta. Um, wait... I think she's uh, Genzin's auntie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so her again to your point these aesthetics like a giant spider what the heck it's so cool looking yeah but, it is uh, really cool so what's your what's your favorite mythical champion if you didn't pull a dupe lady makage what would be the one that you'd be like i wanted this one but i never got it for me it would be first on the list a crixia absolutely a crixia. A crixia. okay um because i have no lockout champ still other than a basher and he only locks oh, out for one turn. No, no so, warlords, no Yumiko. No Yumiko, no warlord. Uh, I'm just unlucky. I actually just pulled my third ever Void Legendary in over four years playing free to play. So oh, so you've uh, been free to play for yep four years straight. Four years over. Four wow, years. I commend you, man. Yeah. So I it's it's you. difficult, but I'm just not a lucky free to play player. So um, yeah, definitely Crixia. How about yourself? Who would you want to choose? Do you know what? When the Mythical Champions came out, Ray kind of sent us these um, holographic cards of the Mythical Champions, and you kind of moved them, and it would um, do stuff like the Mythicals, mm-hmm. so like a physical card, right? Yeah. Um, and they gave me Mesimel Lupafang, so I kind of, mm. I, I just want that champion just to match my um, like playing card that they sent me. Yep. But That's yeah. how I, I like Mesimel. Yeah. She's not the best one, but probably my favorite in terms of aesthetics. Probably. Yeah, and, and her double hits decent. It's just not Georgia level. It's, yeah, it's it's decent though. I will say I've died to her on multiple occasions in live arena, and she's way stronger than people make her out to be. I will say in general, just because unfortunately there's just a lot of really end game players with really crazy gear. So, but in general, if you get Mezamel Looper Fang on any account, ninety percent of the players base will be ecstatic about getting her. Um, yeah, like for me, I'm not really into top tier. That's not really where I get my fun in this game. Yeah. My fun comes from these like quirky, weird champions that just do cool things with animations. Yeah. So, yeah. so what would you say would be a champion for you then? Uh, so I got Mikage. What champion do you use in Live Arena pretty often or maybe an underrated champion? Number one pick is actually a free option and it's going to be Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong. Okay, yeah. So this yes. guy's a beast. So how do you how uh, do you have him built? I have mine built in a hybrid. I know some people say you go full into damage or you go full into accuracy. You can't really have the best of both worlds. But I feel like Sun Wukong, you kind of can because let's just say you go into live arena. It's a completely different scenario where, you know, you might only have your two nukas in there, including Sun Wukong. And if you invest heavily into damage and one of your other nukas get banned... I just feel like you have, if you could build him with enough accuracy to, you know, strip most of those champions and just be a nuisance to keep coming back. I have killed multiple enemies with just purely coming back alive and nuking. Like I could have like no revivers left, no champions. He comes back last second and boom, just slashes them. Yeah. So yeah, I really love his hybrid build and it's something that I can carry into um, Hydra boss. I can use it in faction wars, classic arena, you name it. It's just my favorite build in lethal. Nice lethal build. That's what yeah. I used to have mine in previously, and then I regeared him to just make him fast. And by no means is this a great build, but I made him 284 speed, a little bit of damage, and surprisingly, with no lethal, no savage, this guy hits harder than a majority of legendaries in the game. I'm just like surprised at how hard this guy still hits. Um, and I also did yeah. that sort of get a little bit of accuracy rather than no accuracy at all. Yeah, because I feel like with with nukers in particular, they don't really come into live arena, especially in like the tiers that we're at, like maybe silver, four gold, one gold, two. Like those nukers have not got high resistance anyway. So if you're running above, like right now mine is running at 350 accuracy and 230 speed with nice damage as well. Yeah. Like they're not building 350 resistance on their nukers, right? So you can always at least counter those in a sense, take that increased attack off a Roto, so whatever that may be. And, yeah. True. 
And I love the fact the only downfall of Sun Wukong against Rodos is sadly, it's just nuking him down with that ability because I don't think this ability can kill him if you nuke somebody else. It just procs his uh, chance to take a turn. And so... Oh, is it? I believe it does. So that's the only issue with, with this ability against Rodos. Yeah. It doesn't like ignore Rodos's take a turn ability where he mitigates damage. So that's the only mm -hmm. downfall that I see for him, but you know, and of course UDK, but in yeah. general, I usually just ban UDK or ban Rotos if I have him on my team. And then I I can't stand Rotos. I've actually got a Rotos and I don't use him don't use because him? of my hatred about facing him. Oh yeah. god. I love Rotos. Like <laughs> I, I don't have him. I can't I love him. if you see my Rotos build, you'd cry. You'd be like, what on earth? It's literally faction wars broken pieces. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. <laughs> So but bad. you gotta use him. I actually was watching a ton of videos on Amius and people using Rotos like crazy against him. That was, a, that was yeah. Like I might crazy. have to try. I've not beat Amius this rotation. Um, honestly, just resource cost. It's like I can't afford the silver. Switch around masteries. Like right now, I've got. I was trying to do like a guide for Raphalos Blade Master, mm -hmm. and I had no gems. And for the first time in like two years, I bought the monthly gem pack because I needed oh, it for wow. masteries. <laughs> Yeah. And that's the <laughs> one of the cheaper ones, right? It's like ten bucks or something. Yeah, I'm not really a big spender in the game, I guess. Yeah, um, you're a refor spend time reformed time, but... spender. There you go. Yeah, reformed. <laughs> you're not paying uh, anything anymore. Um, the next champion for me, uh, well, actually, I recently rebuilt him, and he's probably my strongest nuker on my account now. Is Foley. I Ooh. I love this guy. Like this was one of my first nukers that I ever got. He was probably like my third ever nuker champ pulled and mm -hmm. i was just like oh my god this guy looks super cool like he looks like he's out of like some type of you know sci-fi movie or something or yeah, looks like, like aliens a, like, alien <laughs> yeah like an alien type thing and it just looks super super cool um so sometimes like i say i, I say to people all the time you know i love just the aesthetics and if i think certain people look really cool then i want to build them even though they might not be the best but in this case, mm -hmm. Foley actually looks cool and is really strong. I utilize him against Sun Wukong on the flip side because he just nukes Sun Wukong down. He can't get back up. So mine, I take pride in this build a little bit, but he could definitely be better. Uh, mm -hmm. But almost 6,500 on the attack, 245 speed, 280 crit damage. Like He actually smacks. I know some people would put him down and be like, oh, he's not the best or... People would prefer like a Ragash or someone else, but because of his speed, that kind of make or breaks. And he's insane because of his passive against Kaimar or champions that place the debuffs yeah, on him. Yeah, it throws me off every time. It's like, yep. do you know when you're not looking and you're just autoing sometimes? Yep. And I'm like, oh, and especially nuked. in Classic Arena as well. Foley just boosts in and boom, nukes you down. I'm like, oh, resets. I've, I've done it so <laughs> many times to people with Kaimar yeah. where they pick him in Live Arena and then I pick Foley. And they don't ban him, and I'm like, oh, wow, you would have won if you banned him. And then I kill yeah. him somehow. Um, but yeah, really strong champion. Love this guy. I think he's top tier. Who's the next one for you? I'm trying to be unconventional here because there is loads of like picks that I would usually go for. <clears throat> uh, maybe one, I'm just thinking of ones that I use sometimes. I'm going to say Mountain King, Mountain actually. King. Okay. So yeah, King. I do use Mountain King from time to time. I'd say 10% of the time, very rare occasions. Yeah. Um, what it comes down to is I've got a triple refresh on his accessories, right? And I've got a six-star blessing in Life Harvest. So what I do is when I'm facing Helicaph teams, I throw him in as an off-topic pick because he ignores block damage. Okay. Um, so, so what I do is I refresh proc the... Um, a a three sorry, and I just one by one take them out through that block damage because it ignores it, and before you know it, they're all down. Um, oh, because they're, they're against yeah, they're Alakar. coming back with the they're coming back with life harvest, and they've got like no health because it's six star, and it's a nasty combo, man. So you know, I know yeah. someone, a uh, buddy of mine named Pirate, and he uh -huh. he's pretty high up. I think he's at like thirty six hundred in live arena, and he has a six star uh -huh. Mountain King as well. And he just shows me tons of photos of him beating people with Mountain King six star and get it. He has him at like 145 K HP crazy damage. Way. And I'm like, oh my God. I Joyce, he needs, he does need a buff, like in terms of cooldowns or something or ignoring some other conditions. 
But for what he is, he is so hard to kill. He ignores so much defense and he's just super tanky. I, and especially if you're going through and counterattacking with like the, um, the masteries as well. Um, like the retribution and deterrence whenever you lose specific HP and stuff. Yeah. He's just he's chunking you down like a tree. It's, it's so cool to so play true. with. Like, yeah, this yeah. guy is actually amazing. Um, another champion that I would choose that I've recently started utilizing more often is actually Eric's. Eric's. Oh, is, Eric, is that. Who's that? Is that a, that's a free champion, is right? A free champion from just logging in, I believe. Mm hmm or from doom tower i think it's from logging in and she's actually incredible you put her in retaliation or you put her in counterattack uh, accessories with retaliation and make her somewhat fast i don't even have any books in her no blessing and the masteries are just done on uh, the helm smasher with counterattack mm -hmm. masteries and she counterattacks so often even though she's hitting 30 to 40k damage on the a1 and potentially removing a random debuff from the targets. She hits pretty hard, and she's pretty strong against any of the spirit champions that you're going up against. She constantly puts down Sun Wukong, and so anytime Sun Wukong was like A3-ing me, she killed them instantly, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Sun Wukong come back to life, AoE, killed instantly. Because against UDK, it, does, it goes against his passive because... It's not just yeah. single targeting. So she's actually super, super powerful, and I'm going to continue working on her. She's a really strong champion, and my build is not crazy. It's kind of subpar, but mm -hmm. it does the job. It throws people off, and she tends to get banned a lot too. Yeah, she's she's someone that I've not actually invested in yet, honestly. Um, I have seen her in Classic Arena ages ago where... Yeah, it was like stone skin and they just coming through and attacking me and attacking me before i knew it i was dead mm -hmm. i was like damn what am i missing here yep. but um yeah i agree she's a really cool champion at first i was underwhelmed from her kit when i seen from the daily logins i believe but over time she's kind of climbed into pvp right really oh, strong. yeah 100 percent. what's another champ that you would choose um next one for me all right, we're going to lead a bit more into the damage side now, but still unconventional. Um, I'm going to go with Kandrafon. I Kandrafon. love Kandrafon. Okay, so yeah. candy, good old Candy. What's funny is I just yeah. pulled him recently. Okay. I gotta build Kandrafon, him do you know what it is? With, with Live Arena, right? Banning is such a massive thing. And if you lose your increased attack option or your protection or whatever that may be, or even banking on for your nukers, he's got a very unique passive that kind of does that for himself. He doesn't need to rely on others. So uh, with the uh, from the shadows passive, damage increases by forty percent whilst under veil or perfect veil. Pairs very well with those Duchess champions, right? Yeah. Um, who I use as well, but also receives forty percent less damage as well. So as a new kid, this is something you want to see, and also will boost his champion's temi to each time uh, he receives damage under those veils. So even if you can't get incredibly fast speed because you're investing heavy into damage, you're just boosting into battle, taking more turns. The A1 can um, nuke against targets under buffs and massive AoE, self-increased speed and increased attacks from his A3. He's just a, he's a crazy champion that I just feel like he's slept on a lot nowadays. Probably power crit by like, you know, those Georgids and you mm. name it. But Arrived, yeah, man, I love sure. using him uh, yeah, a lot, a good to be champ. fair. I, I just got him. Literally like three days ago, two days ago during the one plus one. Yeah, I think I got pretty, I think a big swaying point for these champions for me as well. I do want to reiterate is blessings. Like it's kind of like I pull a high star blessing for these champs. And now this is why I want to use them more. Yeah. But I think Kanjafon was even before the blessings, probably one of my favorite nukers in the game. Uh, just very fun to use. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of nukers, I think I would go with uh, Errol. What? Errol... Uh, you're, you're, you're pulling out the tricks today. You're surprising me. Yeah. yeah. So Errol, at first, I was like, he sucks. But mm -hmm. then somebody was like, just build him really fast and put some damage on him. Of course, anytime is he the Is he the fear and true fear, dude? I don't have him. Uh, so Errol is, he has a single hit here, but every ability, it, it has an additional 30% chance to crit. And on his A2, because he's force affinity he actually is pretty strong against rotos and so i tend mm -hmm. to bring him in against rotos in live arena 
or I'll bring another champion that can do double or triple hits. And this double hit hits pretty hard. I don't have any books, but he really benefits from books. So this guy's hitting about maybe between 25 and 40k per hit on this mm-hmm. one. But if he's booked out, he's going to hit between 40 and 75k per hit. So it's a massive difference, and it's on a three turn. And then this ability, if you have a little bit of accuracy, it removes all debuffs from this champion, steals all buffs from the target before attacking, has a 30% extra chance of inflicting a critical, and grants an extra turn if they're killed. And this hits pretty hard. So oh. if you can kill someone, again, UDK is a problem, but if this works, you can kill someone, take an extra turn, double hit, smack, they're they're all dead. Um, and then Soul Reap, just in case. He's a one star. Pulled him from the shop. But Interesting. This he's so much easier to build for low if you're a free to play player like myself, if you're a low spender, he's so easy to build. He's so great early and progression based. I mean, it's mm-hmm. awesome because you only have to build him with 70% crit rate. And this is like not the best gear and you can build accuracy on him because of it. So with a lot of champions that are attack base, they require accuracy if they have debuffs and you know how much harder it is to build those champs with accuracy in their kit and then they it's like the leorius problem right if you want that true fear you, yeah. you gotta invest you gotta lose a bit of your attack stats to get that accuracy so exactly yeah. and so with him they allow us to, to you know mitigate a little bit of the crit rate stats needed and that way we can put more speed we can put accuracy you can put some more attack and it makes them easy to build um and all my mm-hmm. champions on my account i don't have any plus ones or anything uh faction guardians are kind of not there at all, but I'm still building fairly decent champs considering my playtime. Um, yeah. What's the next champion you would pick? Next one for me, I would probably go with you know, someone that I have fun with, right? He's not really that good for it, but I, I use Blizzard the Howler. Blizzard, okay. The, <laughs> yeah. the new fusion that just came out. Yeah, he's just a nuisance. You know when you pair him with Sun Wukong, Skinwalker, right? Because right? he's got like an ability to revive on death. Um, when you kill him, where's he at? So you the kind Ogrin? of he's from the Ogrins. Ah, here he is. Yeah, so I went for the Soul Chase as well, but I use him. I use him for Fire Knight hard, of course, but because I built him so fast, he's like three hundred and twenty-five speed Dang. and like six hundred accuracy. Right, that's kind of like a decent build for Arena. I oh, was yeah. like, do you know what? I'm gonna throw him in there to see what he could do. But the, you know that AWE freeze, that decreasing of Termi, and that nuisance of a passive. It's just so annoying for people to face because he keeps popping back up and then Sun Wukong is back up again and ally protection. He's just, it's so fun to pair with Sun Wukong, man. That's yeah. a super smart way to use him. <laughs> I didn't even think Obviously, about he's, that. He's reducing our damage, of course, with the freeze debuff uh, from what we're doing. But if you're just trying to have some fun, um, I highly recommend Blizzard, man. He's cool. Wow, I wish I went for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you not go for I Blizzard? I didn't go for him. No, I, yeah. I saved up. So it is for me when when we talk about City of Centranos for like future rotations and stuff. If we need like Ogrins to take down Fire Knight Heart, I'm gonna need this dude, right? So that's I true. For it. He's gonna be super strong for the waves too. Yeah. The next champ for me, everybody's gonna freak out on this one, but I always say it in my videos. I scream it out, Bushi, and uh, yeah, Bushi, Bushi? is oh uh, interesting champ. Uh, I do utilize him in, or used to utilize him a lot in live arena. He's mm-hmm. coming up more often in Cursed City. I use him in my faction war still. Uh, I used him in dungeons. He actually hits really hard with no savage or, or uh, you know, lethal. He can mm-hmm. hit over 200k damage uh, on bosses. So, and that's just with this gear, and it's not even that great. 5,600 on the attack. 252 crit damage another champion where you can build them with 70 percent crit rate so mm-hmm. he actually smacks i did make a video in the past also i utilized him against lydia because of his passive so if the team kills him and he also has swift parry too so he might not die so it's more annoying but when he dies he revives with an unkillable buff on a three turn cooldown so he procs lydia's passive and then I can revive the rest of the team with my Duchess because she's in stone skin. Mm-hmm. And then I can go to town and just uh, nuke them all down. And he can do it one by one. And a lot of times I'll use like ally attack with him. And then this ability scales up every time you use it. 
So he's very niche, but he's an interesting champion. I used to utilize him a lot and still sometimes use him in Tag Team Arena. I need to see a video on that one. You used to get a video on Bushi. Yeah. That'd be a fun one. Yeah, he's actually really <laughs> good. And I'm going to rebuild him at some point. So he's going to be like the god yeah. like god mode Bushi, something like that. All right. Uh, what's another champion that you tend to all right. utilize? Now, now, all right. So enough of the fun picks. Now we're going into the juicy picks, the all ones right. that I use a lot. Number one picks here. Right. Straight up first one, Yumiko, Yumiko. Shadow King. All right. So Yumiko, wish I had her. Yeah, Yumiko is straight out lockout. You know, you place that hex on a on a Siffy, and the Siffy's sleeping herself. It's a fun time because uh, she sends the debuff back. If anyone's trying to freeze me, I freeze them back. Like you name it, she's just so simple but effective. And without her, I'd probably lose so much more battles than I do. I just it's like the number one ban option, right? I, it's at a point where I put Yumiko there just to forcefully get her banned at times. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> let, let me keep my nukas for this one, but. You use it as yeah. like a, you know, it's it's more of a trying to play mind games, basically. Yeah, she's like my mind game one, but when she does slip through, she definitely slips through, and oh. she does that that nice work. So I hate you, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate facing her. I mean, like, do you ever do a? Uh, do you ever use Yumeko and Kaimar together against people? Not in live arena. I do it in classic. I've made the mistake she's... multiple times. Where people oh, put don't. Yumeko and Kaimar, and I get demolished because they just keep on resetting each other. And Plarium, you need to fix that. Come on now. Uh, but I don't <laughs> think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. Um, so they'll just keep resetting back and forth and back and forth. And then it'll be like a Georgia with them, and then a shoes yep. in on top of it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, it's crazy it's a nasty combo man like i use it in my doom tower as well so i do like open a seer reset with the one seer reset with kaimo seer done Dang. it's like oh, beautiful you got do you have the trunda the trundas uh i don't i don't use trunda i've got her though i don't use her trunda comp and hydra no i can't be a ah. part of that trend man i can't <laughs> do you know i feel so bad it's like do you know when you just see people with billions of damage? Yeah. And I'm like, people are going to be looking at me like, YST, I'm on sub into you, man. Yeah. We've, we actually, <laughs> I, yeah. our clan got demolished a couple times by Trunda comps. And I'm like, dang. That's why I wish they kept Madman and maybe even Corp Cadaver. I wish they didn't just nerf him into the ground. It would have been really nice. What's your, what's your thoughts on Rathalos? Have you tried him out? Rathalos, I just got him and I'm still trying to build him. So I haven't tried him yet, but I'd love to, I'd love to work with him. Uh, Pixneal. Uh, yeah, Raphalos, yeah, he's a really him. uh fun champion. I think there's like some little, like I guess in the Hydra he becomes like a mischief tank very easily if you want to use his A3 because oh, he places really? that he extra can? buff on it. He places that extra buff on himself, and it's like sometimes it can be a nuisance because now he's getting stole for everything where it can't be avoided unless you lock this off. Um, yeah. but, That's actually pretty yeah, interesting. I, but if you are bringing in A or we increase crit damage, of course you can alleviate that, but. Overall, he's still like a very, very cool champion. Um, yeah, this guy massive is damage, be insane for my Hydra. Uh, I think he's gonna probably replace one of my champions for sure. Probably Husk. Probably could replace Husk. Maybe. You think yeah. he does more damage than Husk? I tell you what, I use Missionarchy, right? And Missionarchy, I put him in. I put a Ravalos into a nightmare team with no increased attack, no weaken. And paired alongside a Mishinaki who does, um, he was a built in Relentless, Raphalos wasn't. So he was getting extra turns, and he had increased defense for damage, and he had all those extra hits, and they actually did the same damage. And I was shocked. Oh, I was dang. like, I was like, wow, Raphalos did that without increased attack or weaken, and he is on the same damage as Mishinaki. Um, it's pretty bonkers, man, when you think about it. Yeah, he is insane. I can't wait to use him. Just got to keep on upgrading. We got that champ training going on for Xenogur and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So for but, another champion for me, uh, who else do I use? Maybe maybe someone not not someone that people use all the time, but who was it? Mm, I recently started utilizing. Ooh, who was the champ? Oh, Samson. I use him all the time now. Oh so, yeah, do you know what? I just pulled this dude. I actually love this guy. Um, I, I pulled Samson. Everyone was calling him trash to me. I was like, oh damn, I was excited I've about that. I used him a lot. I think he's really good. I because okay, so hear me out here. 
This guy has Ward of the Fallen on, and that helps, right? Because okay. it mitigates tons of damage, and he's HP-based, so he's hard to kill. And mm -hmm. so if you think about Mountain King, he hits one hit. This guy does AoE, and he does Grant's extra turns. And if you put him in the Mastery Cycle of Magic, and he does over a certain amount of damage, 30% of the target's max HP, he has a mm -hmm. chance, 30% chance, of decreasing the cooldown. And he has such low cooldowns. Three turn, mm -hmm. four turn. So it's, it's you use this, you go into this, that makes this a three turn. If you proc anything, that makes this a two turn. So it's basically coming up next turn. And then the crazy bread and butter about his skills is passive. Decreases the damage he receives from critical hits by 20%. Meaning, I don't always die from Rodos. And then counterattacks the attacker when hit with a critical. He has a stun on his A1. So if you counterattack and he has accuracy, which he's also increasing his accuracy on this ability, he can stun Rodos. He can stun other mm -hmm. targets. And so if I get locked out, I use him against Warlord. Because Warlord hits with his lockout ability, he counterattacks, stuns him. Unless he's yeah. in stone skin or immunity. Um, and then the AoE, he also, because he's increasing his accuracy, removes all increased defense buffs before attacking. So if you have a Seafy that you're going against where she places increased defense, or you're going up against a Helicath who has the increased defense, or Kyoku, other champions like that who can place increased defense passively, he'll take it off. And then you basically just nuke them down. So if it kills one enemy, which if they have a, an attack-based champion, likely he's killing them, then it likely will kill everybody else. So that's why I love this dude. And again, mine, my build is nothing compared to what other people can build or what you could potentially build. So you could actually have some fun with this guy. Also, on top of the increased accuracy, he places increased crit damage on himself, on all allies. For three turns so he's increasing his crit damage to do even more on top of that so he could he actually has won a lot of matches for me from the counter attacks alone um so i wouldn't sleep yeah. on him it, people people sleep on him he's very underrated i need to i'll give him a shot because when i pulled him i was like i was pretty hyped so i was like yo we got ourselves king kong let's mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. um yeah i'll give him a shot we'll see how it goes I was going to say, I'll bring him into Live Arena right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't do it. Uh, it'll take too much time. Um, but yeah, what's one more? We'll do one more champ for you and one more champ for me. And then we'll what I'll do is I'll spree through like my last three, I guess, like very yeah, yeah, quickly. Yeah. So we'd have to go. Um, one would be Marisha the Unbreakable. Amazing passive. We got, um, of course, the shields. The and She keeps reviving everybody and goes back and forth um, with my next champion, of course, which would be Duchess Lilithu. Um, Duchess. in a stone skin build, so Duchess is a massive carry. And once you pair her and Marishka together, it's like Duchess revives the Marishka, and then when the Duchess dies, and then the Marishka, she revives the Duchess, and she's like an annoying combination to fight. Mm -hmm. And then the last one would just be Harima from the Shadowkin, um, who I use absolutely everywhere. I, I just, do you know what it is when I pulled Harima right, I was very excited. But because I never tried her before in like, you know, the test server or anything like that, or really had much notice of her, she really, really shocked me. It's that passive, man, that the reduction of enemy ignore defense and the way she scales from that A2 yeah. um, to mitigate their damage as well. It's just a nasty combo. And if you don't get her out there quick, you better know she's here to stay. I <laughs> tend to ban her a lot. So and yeah. even with my Sun Wukong, with my Samson, all my spirit champions that are nuking, so you have to utilize this Corrado dude against her or else she's mitigating so much damage. And I do mm -hmm. have Corrado that I need to build. I have a, quite a few champs that I want to build, but I just don't have the resources. Hey, what does Corrado do again? I can't remember. So Is his it a passive inflicted by this champion cannot be decreased by enemy passives, skills, or masteries except for the passive skills of bosses. Ooh. So that passive, he mitigates her passive completely and just straight up nukes her. Now, if he's also the partner to Yumeko. So when he's partnered with Yumeko, this debuff cannot be resisted on the block act of skills as well. I might have to pair. I might try him out, you know. I've not really... I've got Yumeko, so I could try him. I've not actually ever played with him, but I do have him. He's insane with Yumeko, but, and I don't have her. But if I had her, I would use him and Yumeko a lot against Harima. Because this mm -hmm. skill also grants an extra turn and resets this, this skill if Yumeko's on the same team and the skill kills an enemy, which it will. He hits really hard with this ability. 
Um, Interesting. So yeah, so I want to build him just to go against Harima and see if I can take her out. Um, mm -hmm. and people are going to be surprised at how how good he is. I guess honorable mention. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much, YST, for coming on and joining me on the channel here for the first collab, uh, first legitimate collab. I really appreciate that. And everyone, you, I will leave YST's YouTube channel in the description down below. So go subscribe to his channel. Support the man. He's an awesome creator. And really appreciate you again, man. Anything you want to leave leave off? The one thing that I'll leave off here is, firstly, thank you so much for having me on the channel. It's been long overdue. But every time I go on the channel for the first time, hey. we got to make a Genshin. <laughs> we got we to gotta get it out. <laughs> hey, he's ending the so, video with the Genshin. I'm surprised he wasn't an honorable mention for you. So it is. He just kind of lurks in the shadows. So for anyone that stays towards the end of the video, kind of pops up sometimes. But there we go. <laughs> well, thank you so much, YST. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys.